All right, good morning, guys. So I am out here this morning because I have a friend who asked me to do a video on planting for beginners. She wants to start gardening and she has no knowledge of gardening whatsoever. So she's gonna be starting as a total and complete beginner. So because I've been working on this area over here, I decided that I would actually do a kind of step-by-step instruction video as to putting plants in the ground. I'm not going to be doing any sowing today. This is simply going to be planting and it's going to be from a beginner standpoint. So we are not going to be talking about soil testing or pH balance. Um, personally, I think that when you're talking to beginners and you start talking about acidity and you know alkalinity of a soil, it kind of puts them off a bit. Not only that, I don't want to discourage people who don't have the money to pay for soil testing or to be buying soil testing kits. You know, I just want this to be fun for the home or backyard gardener, you know, just to get started. You know, just, you know, the basics as to what you may need and um, putting plants in the ground. So that's what I'm gonna be out here doing today. So I'm going to be talking in a step-by-step sort of process just to help out those who are just getting started. So you know what, you guys stay tuned and I'm gonna take you guys along with me. Good morning, family. Good morning, family. Don't forget, grow some trees, grow some food, grow something. Let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, the first thing I wanna talk to you about is your soil. You need to know what your soil, I guess you could say your soil type. I'm not gonna say type, but okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go by the feel of your soil. Does your soil feel like clay? Is it kind of reddish and sticky? And you know, the water just kind of sits on top of it. Um, if you have soil like mines here in Southern California, I have soil that is pretty sandy. Sandy soil is not bad because what you want is soil that drains really quickly, but you don't want it to lose moisture quickly, which I tend to have a problem with that here because like I said, it's Southern California and we have 100 to 110 days all summer long. So being in a drought, and um, dealing with sandy soil. Uh, you gotta kinda do other things to help your soil to retain moisture and mulching is one of those things. But right now I wanna talk to you about amending your soil. So the word amend is just what it is. You're pretty much just adding to your soil to either add nutrients in or to change the texture of your soil. So what I have here in front of me is what we would call either potting soil but this is for in ground because we are doing in ground we're not doing in pots and cow manure because you always want to add some type of organic matter when planting because your plants need food just like you do so i know a lot of people think that you know dirt as you put it <laughs> and water is all that a plant needs but a plant actually needs to eat and when you are putting plants in the ground the best thing you want to do is start off with a good foundation for them it's no different than building a house when building a house you don't put up walls and then put in a foundation you put your foundation in first and then you build up from there and you do the same thing when putting plants in the ground because what you want to do is build a strong and healthy root system if your plants start off with a strong and healthy root system then there's a better chance for them to survive so what i'm going to be planting today is this chrysanthemum now i know it may look dead to you but chrysanthemums are notorious for this they usually um, thrive in the fall or cooler seasons and uh, then they tend to die back all you have to do is cut them down and they will come back again for you so we're going to start off by digging a hole now when you're putting plants in the ground you want to look at the depth of the plant and the width 
of the base of the plant because you're going to dig a hole where the plant, see that soil in there? You want it to sit flush with the surface of the ground that you're putting it in. And then you wanna dig a hole that is twice the size of this container. And the reason you wanna do that is because you wanna have soft enough soil down there to where your roots can just stretch out and grow and build a really healthy root system. So we're gonna start off by digging a hole right there. So if you do have clay soil or soil that, um, depending on where you're growing, if you're planting next to things like a driveway or a work area and you're not sure what has come in contact with the soil, it's really easy to dig out the hole that you need and discard that soil and you can grow directly into the potting soil that you purchase from the store or from a nursery. Okay, so this hole is a little bit deeper than what I need it to be, but as you can see, it is twice the size of the container. A little deeper is fine because like I said, I am adding into this. And as you can see, this soil has lots of bark, and other organic matter, and then adding in the cow manure. And you always wanna mix it really good. If you have compost, this would also be when you add it in. Compost is also organic matter that is pretty much made from things like vegetable scraps and grass clippings and other organic matter and all it is is food for your plants so what I'm gonna do is all of the old stuff you see on here I'm gonna be cutting that off it's not science it doesn't have to be perfect it's like I said it will come back for you Okay, so we've got most of that off of there. Still got a few ugly pieces, but um, just gonna kind of squeeze to loosen that up a bit so it'll just slide out for you. Now, like I said, these have been in the pot for a very long time, but it's not root bound. So if it was root bound, you'd see all of these roots just wrap, wrap, wrap really tightly. But all you do is you just loosen just a little bit because what that does is it encourages all of these roots to stretch out and grow. I'm just gonna sit that down in the hole. I'm going to add a little more of the manure. If you know the word fertilizer, that's what this is. Now, this would be a good time to water it in because you wanna make sure that all of that water gets down into those roots and it doesn't just sit on top of the soil that you are adding back into the hole. So we're gonna water a bit now. We're gonna fill that hole back in and then we're going to add more water to that.
because when watering, you always want to make sure that you get the water down into that root area and not just sitting on top. You don't want to water the foliage. You want to get down in there where the roots actually need all of that moisture, all of that water to help them maintain and to build a strong root system so that you can have a strong plant above. That's not enough water, so I'm gonna go and get some more and add that in there. Okay, so now that we've got enough water down there to the root system. So now I'm just going to start backfilling. So what I like to do is I take my native soil, my manure, my potting soil, and I like to mix them all in there. But for me, native soil is always best because you want to try to work with what you have at hand. This is also another good reason to always use plants that are either native to your area or plants that are specific to the zone that you live in. So you want to plant down, push down, not too hard, but you know, just enough to firm to make sure there's no air bubbles in there because when air gets to your root system, it will dry your roots out and kill your plants. And you want to add more water. I'm going to clean that off a bit. When you do that, it also kind of lets you know the level that you have your plant at because you don't want water running off and not actually getting down, like I said, to your root system. You don't want it at a slope unless you are planting a plant that needs to be sort of healed up. But this is a chrysanthemum and it doesn't need to be healed. The water doesn't need to wash away from it. So here I can see that um, it's going to run off into my little patio here. So all I'm gonna do is build a sort of little basin around my plant so that the water will stay. In the area where I need it to. Now, of course, I will be putting more plants down here, so I'm not really worried about any of this other stuff. And over time, as this water sinks, you'll see that your soil around the plant will also start to drop down. So that will also let you know if you need to add more soil or if you need to take any away. But that is pretty basic right there as to just beginning gardening. So what you wanna do is when you have plants like this, like this one, it can pretty much just go with the sprinkler system that I have over here, which means it will get watered three times a week. And that should be fine for this one. But what you also need to know is the plant that you are dealing with. You need to know if it needs full sun, if it needs shade, um, is it drought tolerant? Does it only take a little bit of water? Does it need a lot of water? Um, those are things you need to know before you put a plant in the ground. A lot of times we wanna do what I'm doing right now, which is planting up an area that I sit in. You know, you want pretty things around you, but this area used to be a shade area and now it gets 
full sun. So what I did is I put a shade cloth up above to kind of mimic the shade that I need. In the summertime. And then in the winter time, the shade cloth can be removed. Now what I do have is another plant here. This is society garlic. Now society garlic is a drought tolerant plant. It takes full sun. It needs very little care. It has also been in its container for over a year and I need to plant it out. This is a very, very low maintenance plant. However, it is also a plant that will spread. It clumps. I can actually take this plant and divide it. And wow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I probably have 12 plants in here just from this one plant. So I'm gonna be planting that one out next. And you guessed it, I am gonna be dividing. So what does it mean to divide a plant? All right, let me see, I'm gonna put my gloves on. Simply because this has been sitting for a while and uh, you know, you never know what's living in you. <laughs> All right, so when you have plants like these, they tend to, I guess you could say, reproduce themselves. Do you see that root system? So all those roots. But that is because there are several plants in here. Look at that. So this is the type of plant that I can actually take it and I can separate. I'm gonna break this all up and I'm going to separate these probably into clumps about that big. So from this one plant, I'm probably going to do about eight plants. And this will continue to do the same thing and give me more and more plants. And if I choose, I can go ahead and separate these after they've grown into bigger plants and spread those out all around my garden, or I can just let them grow into what we call clumping plants. So let's get started separating this guy. Okay, separating this guy is not hard. It's gonna look a little brutal. <laughs> but it's not actually hard and it's not going to hurt it. So, you know what? You get a couple of spots here. All I'm gonna do is kind of slice into it. And I know it looks brutal and it looks like it's killing the plant, but it's not. See if you can see those. See those little bulbs?
This is about a nice size clump. I'm not too worried about cleaning this guy up. Usually when I do, I just stuff the stuff down in the hole also. Now these guys prefer sandy, loose soil. And society garlic will last a long time for you. It is actually one of my oldest growing plants in my garden. It's one of the first things I planted when I bought this house. And the one that I have on the other side over here is almost 20 years old. And we're just going to backfill. Once again, you want to make sure there are no exposed roots. Everything that was below the soil is still below the soil. And then you want to add water. This is one of those plants I told you that is drought tolerant. So it can be planted on a hill because it does not need a lot of water. going to repeat the same thing on this side. I'm going to add a little more water. I'm going to let that drain a bit. And then we're going to back. Once again, you want to make sure you have all of the roots covered. Everything that was below surface in the pot needs to also be below surface when you put it in the ground. And then we're going to add a little more water. That's it. I'm going to get the rest of these separated and into the ground. All right, so I know I didn't give you too much of a good view of that before. So this is what its root system looks like. And then if you look up here, do you see that? You can see those bulbs in there. That's what you're separating. So, I'm gonna do maybe three out of this one. And then I'm gonna call it a day. Okay, so before I start cleaning up, I thought I'd do a recap. So, one of the things that you need to know before you put your plant in the ground is what type of soil do you have? Is your soil clay? Is it sandy? Does it hold a lot of moisture and the water doesn't drain or does it drain really quickly? Because that's going to let you know what type of plants you can put in that area or if you need to amend your soil. So before you plant, you always need to make sure that you have either some kind of amendment for your soil in addition to a fertilizer, whether it be an organic matter like manure or compost or you can buy store-bought, I don't want to say industrial, but you know, man-made products that come in bags that, you know, they're granules, you just kind of sprinkle them in. Um, also, you want to check your plant label. 
all plants come with a label telling you what they need, whether it be full sunlight, partial shade, shade, whatever, it's gonna tell you what the plant needs. It's gonna tell you if it's a blooming plant, it's gonna let you know what type of, you know, what the blooms look like, when it's going to bloom, if it's gonna go dormant, all those type of things. You know, that's what that plant label, the plant labels to me are gold. You know, I'm that person that I wasn't huge on flowers and now that I plant flowers because they bring in pollinators, you know, I keep my labels. Um, I might get rid of the containers, but I keep the labels because it lets me know what that plant actually needs and what it needs all year long. So I store them in my garden shed. If I have a question about the plant, I just go, I look through all the labels, I find it and it just lets me know. Um, also, you wanna make sure that you follow the watering schedule that's recommended for the plant. Now, if you live in an area that gets natural rainfall on a regular, you're blessed. <laughs> if you're in Southern California like me and we get rain that adds up to one month out of the year, you're gonna have to water your plants. Whether it is with a watering can or sprinklers or drip irrigation, you're gonna have to get water to your plants. Um, not only that, you're gonna have to make sure you fertilize at least once to twice a year, depending on what the plant actually is and what its needs are. I know this might seem like a lot, but it's not. <laughs> um, I'm telling you all of this in one shot, but these are things that you're gonna be doing over time for the success of your garden. Um, Basically today we covered just getting the plants in the ground. So now that they're here, the next thing we're gonna work on is just letting them get established. You want to let that root system get established. You want them to, um, it's kind of like when you move into a house and the house is new to you at first when you get there, but you gotta kind of get used to it. You know, you didn't really unpack all of your things because you don't know where you want stuff to go. But as you get the feel of your home, you start realizing you want this in this room, you want this in this space. You know, you just kind of start branching out and that's what your roots do too. They get in this new home, they are kind of getting used to their surroundings. So once they, those roots start loosening up and they start branching out and they're starting to go out into the rest of the earth and they're seeking out more nutrients and they're stretching out. And when they do that, they are developing a healthy root system, which gives you a healthy plant on the surface. So you want to be patient. Your plant's not gonna grow overnight. Um, and you just kind of want to just keep watch on it just to make sure that it's actually flourishing, not turning yellow or brown. Um, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. I mean, gardening is fun. It's relaxing. You know, once you get your hands in that soil and you know you're down close to the earth, you know, it has kind of a healing process for you. It has a lot of healing properties. So this is video one. So I will do a couple more videos on the beginner series and I hope you guys join me in those also. So thanks again for joining me today and I will see you all in the next video. Once again, do not forget to subscribe, subscribe, hit the notification button. My stats show that 89% of the thousands of you that watch my videos are not subscribed to my channel. So you know what? Hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video.